Hello everybody, welcome over to another Gran Turismo 7 video by Kyle Rose, a member of Kirith Esports. In this video today, what I want to do is talk to you about using traction control, and if you're not using it, why you should. So in this video, we're going to go over uh, how I use traction control and why I use it with the Group 3 cars in particular. Now I know there's a bunch of people that are already getting really furious on their keyboards and they're ready to light me up saying, no, you don't need to use traction control, it's not going to make you faster, blah blah blah. Don't worry about it. This video is probably not for you. If you are really hardcore about using traction control, I completely understand. That is your option. But this is for some people who are wavering on the edge, whether or not they should use traction control, say they constantly have problems with the car rotating under low speed corners or getting on the gas early. Maybe people want to find a solution to try and solve that. In my opinion, traction control is a necessary tool in this game to be consistently fast and being competitive in say daily races. You can't really make a mistake in this game or else it punishes you pretty heavily, especially when you're racing online in more competitive lobbies than playing around with the AI. What traction control can do is add that consistency to your race which makes you significantly faster, knowing that you have the confidence in the traction of the car. So, what I did to kind of illustrate the point a little bit clearer for some people is I took the Viper to Daytona, and the Viper is notoriously tail happy at Daytona. So what the test entails is taking the stock Dodge Viper around the Daytona road course and just doing some lap times back to back and seeing how long it gets me to get up to speed in the Dodge Viper with traction control and without traction control. And then trying to find the fastest lap between using traction control and not using traction control. So we're going to take the Dodge Viper to Daytona. Let's head over there right now. Alright, we're going to click on this, we're going to click down here, okay, time trial, go to the road course, okay, we're back on the track here, uh, we got zero traction control coming up first, that is the idea, as we roll across the line here, we set our first time, it's a 42.415, uh, and then in the next lap we immediately just do a nice little loop-de-loop -loop at the International Horseshoe, we were able to keep it on the track on the first one without traction control, but having a little bit of difficulty on the second lap as soon as we start pushing it. So here's a close-up of the throttle. You can see how fast the car rotates once you add just a little bit of throttle. So anyways, doing some more laps here. We get down to a 41.223. Not too bad, but on the next lap again, coming out of here, it's just balancing and we just, we just lose it. We get a loopy again. Park it in the grass. It's disappointing. Okay, so we get out of the grass immediately back onto the back straight and we just lose it right here. This is, again, zero traction control. Just having an issue getting that consistency, finding that balance. Um, but anyways, we're coming up here on the outside. We get a 41.057. I think we can get into the 40s here, the one minute 40s. So that's going to be our goal here in the next few laps. Uh, but as you can see, again, getting on the back straight, getting super sideways, hitting the wall. Why not just do a 360 barrel roll? Uh, we're coming in here though, so now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of lay in the wood a little bit, really be patient. Uh, we got ourselves a 140.834, which means we we're finally cracked into the 140s. I'm thinking, okay, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good lap time. I haven't tried with traction control yet. Uh, anyways, here we are. We're doing our first lap with traction control set on one. I wonder what it could be. And let's see, it is a 40 flat. It's a 40 flat. So here is the a uh, few more laps just to confirm what I was seeing. This is with traction control off. I got a 140.2 as my best lap. I was like, oh, I'm getting closer. Maybe we can keep leaning into it a little bit. But I was unable to really get down there. As you can see, my lap time's kind of pushed out a little bit further. So we're going to try just one more lap with traction control on at the end of this session and see what we can get out of it. Now what you can also see while I'm doing this lap is how early I can get on the throttle without the car really upsetting. There's a lot more confidence in my driving style. I'm putting purple sectors in here uh, with the traction control on. You can actually see it working sometimes on the straightaways, helping keep this car planted. But look how early I'm on it. Traction control works overtime. And you can see that the car still gets out of the hole really well in this game. Uh, one thing is, you can see I'm not just stabbing the gas too for the traction control. I'm still modulating the throttle carefully 
onto the back straightaway here so that way the car doesn't step out too much. If you stab the gas, the traction control won't work as effectively here. So I'm finding a lot of speed by getting on the gas confidently and early, and that allows the traction control to not be overbearing and slow the car down dramatically. So you can see we're hucking it through the bus stop nicely here. We're taking the same line nearly every time uh, on the previous laps, and we're still hitting purple sectors. So we're coming down here on the main straightaway yet again, working with traction control coming out of that bus stop as well and allows me to kind of you can still control the slide of the car through the bus stop with traction control set on one we're going to come across the line and this is going to be my best lap of the night 139.413 i end it there we hit a barrier screw it send it into the shadow realm we'll, we're coming for another one but as you can see this is a comparison between my first lap which did not have traction control you can see the, the bus stop sector was faster my opinion is on group three cars is having traction control set on one especially for the longer races is going to give you more confidence it's going to give you more consistency and as long as you're not stabbing the throttle on and off just modulate it man just modulate the throttle modulate 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 again this is just advice for those who aren't as comfortable just running traction controls off it is totally an option for those of you who enjoy running traction control off more power to you but in my opinion and what I like to do to be able to really bring the hammer down and to have a lot more fun in daily racing is I run TC1 knowing that I have a little bit of a security blanket to race hard so again thank you everybody for watching it's Kyle Rose with Gear Thieves Sports I stream on Twitch uh, quite a bit during the week I also post videos like this on my YouTube channel, so go ahead and like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or if you enjoyed the content on my channel. Go ahead and check out the other videos. Sometimes I post up some race replays from races that I had over on Twitch. Uh, I do NIS and stuff over on Twitch as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the Kyrus channel as well, as he has a ton of Gran Turismo 7 content, more than I'll ever upload. If you all want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, tell me what you thought about the video. I know that some of you are eager to let me know what you think about the traction control situation and whether or not Gran Turismo is a sim or an arcade racer, but I want to hear your feelings on it. So please leave me a comment if you guys have a specific video you'd like to see me make. So until next time, have a wonderful evening, day, afternoon, whichever. Bye-bye.